Good morning and welcome to the 16th of our daily Bible studies. We are looking at the moment at a series of disaster stories and natural wonders in the Bible and seeing how the biblical writers coped with them and understood them. And today on day 16 we have a reading from the book of Numbers, chapter 16, verses 31 to 34. And this is a scene, a rather disturbing scene. It's an earthquake which swallows up some rebels. Here it comes. As soon as Moses finished his statement, the earth under, his, under the feet of the rebels split open. The ground opened its mouth and swallowed them and all their households, including everyone associated with the rebel Korah and all their possessions too. Alive they went down into Sheol with everything they owned. The ground closed over them. And as they succumbed and were removed from the community, hearing their cries, all the Israelites near them ran away, crying out, The earth will swallow us too. This may well have been a part of an aftershock that shook the Middle East following the major volcanic eruption that had destroyed most of the island of Santorini, otherwise known as Thera and brought the Minoan civilization to an end. The earth opened and swallowed the families of those who, who were rebelling against the leadership of Moses in the wilderness. There had been discontent because of the hardships faced by the refugees as they sought a living in the desert. The right to offer sacrifices to Yahweh had once belonged to all the firstborn sons of the descendants of Jacob. But because of, the, um, because of the incident when they offered sacrifices to a golden calf at the foot of Mount Sinai, that right was taken away from them and restricted just to the tribe of Aaron, who had been faithful. A part of the reason for this rebellion was to claim back for the majority of the families of Israel this right to offer sacrifices. It is difficult to date the disaster precisely during the wilderness years, but whenever it struck, people naturally asked why those people were swallowed up as the earth opened in a great fissure taking them, their families and their possessions, straight into the underworld. Given that the final editor of the Book of Numbers was supporting the claims of the Aaronic priesthood, maybe it is hardly surprising that the rebels were depicted as not just complaining about how hard life was in the desert, but also as rebelling against the, the now established new order. If, as seems likely, the final editing of the uh, books of Moses, the five books of Moses, Genesis to Deuteronomy, was carried out after the return from the Babylonian exile in 538 BC, then the story would have been used to bolster up the rebuilt Jerusalem temple and its priesthood. Behind it lies a disaster that demanded an explanation. When such things happen today, we also need uh, to, to listen to the signs of our own times. They explained a blow to their community using the best knowledge they had. We are obliged to do the same. They had no other plausible explanation for the earth opening up under part of their nomadic community, so they used the understanding that they did have. We have more accurate knowledge of the workings of geology today, 
and would not be so quick to condemn those who died as rebels and sinners. Though it still happens, look at how quickly some Christians condemned homosexuals as sinners during the AIDS pandemic. We do no better than that and should recognise that not, none of us is without sin. We all need the grace of God. Well, that's enough for today. Tomorrow we visit Elijah and an earthquake that he experienced. See you then.